Here are 50 good tips that you probably didn't know of in under 10 minutes. There are timestamps and references in the description wherever relevant. There's a lot to get through, so here we go. Hold control and drag a node into a script to automatically create an on-ready variable for that node. You can also do this with multiple nodes. Just make sure you drag from the empty space below for this to work. Middle mouse click anywhere on open scene tabs to close them. Middle mouse click on open scripts to close them. Double clicking on an instance scene in the viewport opens it directly. The unused parameter warning really serves no purpose just gets in the way, you can get rid of it. Click while holding Alt to add more cursors. You can edit text at all the cursors at once. You can wrap text in an enclosing symbol by selecting the text and then entering the symbol. To randomly get a variable that's either true or false, simply use this short statement. Whenever you paste code into the editor, you're probably used to seeing this annoying error. Use Ctrl Shift I to automatically convert all spaces to tabs. You can edit collision layers directly from the node without having to go to the project settings by clicking the three dots on the right. You can also directly right click on a layer slot to rename it. Set shortcuts for opening the project and editor settings windows to be able to access them quickly. Set up comfortable shortcuts for the run project and run current scene commands. This might seem trivial, but using them is going to save you a lot of time. Also set the stop running project keybind to the same keybind as the run project. I have all of these binds on my mouse and that makes it extremely simple to iterate quickly. If you have a long if statement with multiple conditions, you can use backslash to split it up into multiple lines. You can select any text and drag a node anywhere into the script editor to replace the selected text by the node path. This is useful to quickly drag a node path without being too precise, or to replace an existing node path. Highlight a word in the script editor and press Ctrl D to select the word. Keep pressing Ctrl D to select other occurrences of the same word. Godot will place additional cursors on all of them, and you can edit them all at once. Just be aware that this also selects the occurrences if they occur in the middle of other members. Try not to accidentally change something you weren't intending to. When you have overlapping nodes in a scene, press Alt right mouse button when using the select mode to select a node from a list of all the nodes under the mouse position. You can create your own script templates just like these default ones. Click on editor and then click on open editor data or settings folder. Once the file explorer opens, go to the script templates folder and create a folder with the name of the node you'd like to create the template for. Simply call it node if you want to create a template that can be used on any node. Create a dummy text file and press Ctrl Shift S and save it in the same folder with the .gd extension. Open the new file with the editor of your choice and fill the template. I've linked to the docs below which shows you how you can format the contents of the template. Create a custom template under a node folder and create a class name.gd file as shown in the previous tip. Fill in the contents of the file with this code block. I've also left this code block in the description below so you can simply copy and paste it. You can now use this template to auto-create the class name field without having to manually do it yourself every time. You could also create a template with the default Godot cycle methods included if you'd like. If you want to have code complete suggestions available as often as possible, make a habit of casting variables on declaration. Pair this up with the previous tip to cast your own classes for code suggestions to work on your script properties too. Stop using your mouse for these. Use export category and export group to organize variables in the inspector. Changing file names or locations on disk with the scenes open can cause weird file duplication issues. Close all scenes before editing files to avoid any issues. If you forget to remove print statements and you have no clue where they're being printed from, use Ctrl Shift F to search for the stray print statement in all files, including closed files. Use print debug instead of print to show where it's being printed from. Rulers. That's it. That's the whole tip. We're halfway there. Let's get on to the more spicy stuff now. Always on top. You can only find the always on top setting if you toggle the advanced settings toggle on the top left of the project settings window. Turn on always on top to, well, take a wild guess. This is really helpful because you can click anywhere in the editor and the game window won't just disappear into oblivion. You can rearrange and dock the editor windows by clicking on the three dots next to the window. This is the layout I use, which makes it so that I wouldn't have to drag my mouse all the way to the other side of the screen all the time. You can set the editor to automatically switch to the remote scene tree on play. This way you can quickly change settings during play without having to switch tabs. You can set exactly where the game window appears in the editor settings under the window placement tab. Set the rect field to custom position and then enter custom values below. This way I can have the window not block any of my editor tabs. Feel free to copy my values or experiment with your own. You can use the min or max method to clamp a numeric value only on one side. For example, you could use this to clamp the health value so it doesn't go below zero. You can move, rotate and scale nodes all without having to switch modes. With the select mode active, select the node, hold alt and drag to move the node. Hold shift to limit to a particular axis. Hold control and drag to rotate with a 15 degree increment. Hold control alt and drag to scale. 
You can also hold shift to scale uniformly. You can always hover over the tool to view these shortcuts and more if you forget them. Quickly create built-in scripts to debug or test code in isolation without having to go through the trouble of saving the script on disk. Try not to use them too much for game logic though. Also, be careful when you try to create another new script. The setting is going to be checked on by default until you turn it off again. Create a separate testing scene and pair up with the previous tip to test out features or experiment with mechanics in isolation without creating a bunch of random scripts. Use the run current scene command to test and run the scene when it's open. You can quick load resources directly instead of painstakingly looking for them in this file system. Especially useful if you know the name of the resource already so you can just search for it. You can get rid of the code complete delay to make code suggestions show up immediately. This will make the script editor feel snappier. Here's a comparison. It's a minute difference but personally I find it to be a huge improvement. You don't ever have to type out the entire variable name for it to show up in the code complete suggestions. Simply type letters across multiple words until you find the right one and hit enter. This also works when creating notes or searching for anything really. It's also present in most other softwares as well. Press enter right after creating a node to rename it directly. This way you won't have to reach for your mouse or hit the F2 key to rename the node. Hit Ctrl A search for the node, hit enter twice and type in the name. Quick and easy, so convenient. Oh, and you can hit enter at any point to rename the selected node, not just after creating it. Use this syntax when connecting to signals via code to avoid a string reference. Use export multiline to create a large text box in the inspector to store longer descriptions. You can favorite files and folders in the file system to be able to quickly access them. Right click on a node and click on save branches scene to turn it into a standalone scene. If you need to call a method with call deferred, consider using callable.calldeferred instead of object.calldeferred. You can avoid using a string reference this way. I've linked to a page that I've written where this is explained at a little bit more detail. The audio stream randomizer can play a random sound from a list of audio files. The volume and pitch can be randomized and the chance can be weighted too. You don't have to redesign the donut or, or something like that. You can use Lua style dictionaries to avoid strings for keys by using string literals instead. Children run their ready method before their parents do. This single line of code makes it so that the code that follows waits until the parent's ready is finished and then continues executing. Use breakpoints to debug your code. When you hit a breakpoint, execution pauses before the line is run. You can then simply hover over variables to see their values. Use these buttons to step through your code line by line. You can also see all the script variables listed here, including local variables. You can stop using print statements just to check whether a certain code block is running. Just slap a breakpoint in there and if it gets hit, you know it's running. Go to debug and turn on visible collision shapes to see them in the play window. Super helpful for debugging collisions. A really cool feature hiding in plain sight. Use this sneaky button to record footage of clips of your game right from the editor. Go to the movie writer tab in the project settings and set a folder to save the video into. Play the scene like you normally would and a recording of the game will be stored at the specified path. Make sure you change the file name each time or you might accidentally overwrite your previous recording. Godot hot reload scenes and scripts, so you can work on them while the game is running and everything will be automatically synced up and save even after exiting play mode. Be very mindful if you're changing the properties on the remote nodes or the local nodes though. You need to be using the local nodes for this. And finally, as promised, here's a special one to end the video. Rich text labels are super fun. You can create really cool text effects with zero effort. Go to the BB code in rich text label docs page and scroll down to the text effects heading. Here you'll see the syntax to create all these effects. You can create your own custom effects too, if you want to. Whew. And there you have it. That's 50 tips that make life simpler and more fun while working on the engine. I really hope you found this video helpful. I've never made a video in this style before and speaking into the mic is very difficult. Do let me know if you have any suggestions or criticisms about the video. That would really help. I have some more cool tips listed down, but I decided to cap the count to a nice round number for this video. So let me know if you'd like to see another video in this style. This video took a lot of work to compile, record and edit. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.